Hey guys, what's going on? Michael White here, back like I never left. I just wrapped up my first month as a front-end web developer. And in this video, we're gonna take a look and see whether or not the expectations measured up to reality. So when I was coming up learning JavaScript and trying to be a web developer, an aspiring web developer, I had an idea in my head of what the job would be like. You know, I imagined somebody would give you a draft of something. You do the draft, you turn the work over, they approve it, and you're done. And on the surface, that is what being a front-end web developer is. But, now this is a big but. <laughs> but, when you're building pages for customers, things get messy. I've worked in customer service roles before, so I know people can be picky. People have their, their quirks. But as a front-end developer, you really, really get to experience that. My first project was to build out the front-end of an e-commerce site for artists. Like, they're artists. I can't say more than that, but they're artists. And uh, <laughs> I had two weeks to get it done, which was super stressful. Like, I was, I was freaking out because I wasn't that good yet. I wasn't fast yet. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how I should be doing things. So I was really freaking out, but I got it done. And then uh, once the two weeks is up, we meet with the customer again so they can look at everything. And then they decide they want to change how their product display is, like their main product display. Not only that, but like a whole entire slew of other edits, which is fine. It's their website, right? Like you want to make sure you get what you pay for. I understand that. So the next week rolls around and like we meet that Monday. The product display was updated and I got their edits in and they're like, oh no, we're going to go back now. We want it to be how it was. And can you make all these edits? <laughs> so I'm like, well, okay. I'll do that. So the next day rolls around. I change everything back and got all the edits in that they wanted. And we meet with the client again. And <laughs> there's another list of edits to be made. And they want me to add some other stuff. So now there's more edits and they're adding more stuff. Are you guys seeing the trend here? <laughs> when I... When I wanted to be a front end developer, like I knew, I knew I'd be working with people. People are picky. But man... Man. <laughs> and then, uh, so this, this trend, this process continued for pretty much a, a whole additional week and a half. And it was the same thing time and time again. It was, um, we want to change this functionality and make these edits. And it just persisted. And I understand that, right? Like you gotta, you gotta get the customer, the customer's paying for this. You gotta give them what they want, give them what they're paying for. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a struggle. It was a real struggle. That that was a, uh, but it was an experience with them for sure. And eventually, after um, many meetings, many conversations, many talks with the uh, designer, we got the web page to a state where they were happy and we could move on. <laughs> and I've never been happier. Oh, my first customer was a doozy. I can say that much. It was they were it was a it, it was an experience, and then after that I went right into my second project. So we had a member of our team leave, and you know once they leave their work got um, distributed amongst the other team members, and I was in charge of making the edits to a page that they were working on. They were like building out a version two for a website, so making a bunch of edits, swapping pictures, um, stuff like that. And the first thing I noticed when I took over their project was how much better everything was than mine like their code was it was clean it was like easy to read i knew what was going on there was a lot of stuff i didn't know like some there's some pretty complex things going on in it that i had to like ask other people about and kind of figure out what was going on like for their mega menu like their little nav bar those are crazy but um it was really cool to look at somebody else's like code somebody else's page that they had built out and just see how differently their approach is to things than mine is and that's not saying everything I did was wrong. There's some things that I do that I still think are good, right? But when I look at their code, there's a lot of things that I can change and tweak and a lot of different ways I can approach problems. I learned a lot from looking at their code and working on that. And now I'm able to take things that they were doing and I'm going to do that in the next one. So now my third project, whatever comes after the, um, the one I'm working on now, that one is going to be like my real test to see how much of it stuck and how much I've learned. But, um, I think the chaotic first project was one of the best learning experiences I could have had because it was super chaotic. It was super crazy. 
the customer was super needy, had a lot of changes, and it, it, it forced me to step my game up. You know what I mean? It made me uncomfortable. And for that page, I had to do a lot of things that I've never had to do before. So for the artist page, there is a lot of things that I just had never, ever done before and just had to learn and do it on the fly. Like, I wish I could show you guys the pages, but some of the functionality is crazy. And then when we look at the page that I took over, all the functionality is basic. It's like a standard web page. It's super easy to maintain. It's like easy to edit. It's easy to change things. I feel sorry <laughs> for anybody that has to go into my first project for the artist and make changes in there because there's some crazy things that are going on in there that they wanted. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it might be a bit messy. <laughs> so I wish him the best. But the biggest takeaway from the first month is that you never really know what to expect and you can never really be ready for it. <sighs> it was such a wild first month for me. It's just... <laughs> it was a roller coaster through and through <laughs> from from my panic to start to like now where I'm, I'm I'm comfortable. I feel like I can do things. I know where to look. I know who to ask. It's just a month makes such a difference. Another big thing was um, during my first month, I didn't have a lot of energy left after work. Like once I wrapped my work day up, I couldn't code my own my own projects. Like I was trying to work on Camo to code and I would sit there and I just did not <laughs> want to code anything in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Like I, I didn't want to touch it after doing it for eight hours a day. You know what I mean? Gradually throughout the month, I did start opening my IDE more and more and like looking at everything. And I would like try to code, but I could never fully commit to it. You can only learn so much. I think once the job gets to a point where I know more than I'm learning on a daily basis, that I'll have that extra brain power in the tank to get off work and jump right into my own projects. But for now, I'm trying, guys. <laughs> I'm trying. Like I said, I'm becoming more receptive to the idea of it. Like I'm there now. The first two weeks, I couldn't even. I didn't even want to look. Didn't even want to look at my MacBook Air. Like I use my pro for work, my airs for personal use. I didn't even want to look at it. But now I'm opening it up. I'm looking through stuff. I'm becoming more receptive. But quick side note, I might make a separate video about this. I actually start looking into blockchain development. I think that that's something different enough that I can actually sink my teeth into it after work. You know, it's not doing more of the same. It's kind of going in a completely separate tangent. So I think um, going forward, I might start dipping my toe in the blockchain and seeing what that's like. But I hope you guys enjoyed this rant. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy the content, do me a favor, click that like button, subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to join the community discord. We have almost 100 people in there now. So do feel free to drop by, join our community, and uh, don't be a stranger, say hi. It's awesome to be able to talk to like-minded people who are all working towards the same goal, man. It's a really cool thing. But yeah, I'm going to wrap this video up there. I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.